his vocal was done. It's the very first take he did. He did it in, you know, five minutes or so and then had to get out the door. I'm going to fight them all. Mm. A seven nation army couldn't hold me back. Now listen to it with the drums. They're going to rip it off. What's happening, people? I'm your boy, Otis McDonald. And this is Liner Notes. For today's edition, I'm going to be talking about Seven Nation Army from Aloe Black's Rock My Soul Volume 2. This song was originally written and recorded by the band The White Stripes, featuring the one and only Jack White and Meg White, a duo out of Detroit, Michigan. From the very beginning, when Aloe and I started talking about doing this record and this concept of covering rock songs from our youth, this song was a tune that he really wanted to tackle. The other songs we talked about wanting to just reharmonize all the chords underneath what the melody was singing. Keep the melody original, change the chords up, have fun, see what we can do. But this song, the melody, it's not a melody that's moving that can inform some different chords. And to me, the real melody and hook to this song is the riff. Boom, 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 boom. That's the whole tune. So we had to keep that riff, but let's change the feel. Let's see what kind of soulful, funky, you know, rhythm and blues thing we can do with this song. Max Cowan and Jackson Allen and myself knew that the riff was a little simpler. We could explore some grooves, but I already had an idea of where I wanted it to be pocket-wise. And I was just thinking of like, you know, Otis Redding or something driving like a Stax record. I was just tapping this out, just... But I had a little change to the bass line, to the rhythm. And I was thinking like... So I laid down the drums by themselves. Now, if you've heard this song, you might be thinking to yourself, Self, that's not the drum crew to Seven Nation Army by Aloe Black. You're right, it's not. But this was the original idea that I had for it. So let me show you how we played to this. I laid out those drums, and then I also added some percussion to it. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Self, that is the percussion track that's in the song. And you would be right. It is. But that feel was played against this original drum feel. And then I laid down the bass line. And uh, yeah, I laid down the drums first and then I picked up the bass and with Jackson and Max, we just started grooving on it. And Jack Jackson was, uh, he was playing his Telecaster, I remember, and Max was playing the Hammond organ as opposed to the Rhodes. And I like some of this other guitar stuff. Yeah, like that didn't make the final cut. This country. But it was very cool. And we laid this down with three different sections as basically eight or 16 bar loops. Oh, and I remember this, uh, this guitar, this fuzz guitar thing that Jackson did. It felt like the Beatles to me. It felt like um, Birthday by the Beatles from the White Album. And the riff that we double up on bass and guitar. Yeah. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, not the same, but you feel the feel, you know? Then get into the chorus. And there we play the riff exactly how it would have been played. Boop, boop. Gotta give it to the people because it's such an iconic riff. Send it to Aloe. Aloe was like, cool. Maybe we could change the groove a little bit, though. Can you experiment with the drums? And I was like, yeah, this is his record, and I want to figure out how to make this exactly what it's supposed to be. There's something that Aloe was missing. It's my job to figure out what it was. And he suggested to me to play around with the drum groove from I Would Die For You by Prince. Did I ever tell you this? 
So I would die for you by Prince from the Purple Rain album. It's like it goes like this, like ticka 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 cat. Uh, uh, cat. I would die for you. And he thought that might be kind of cool. So like boom boom. Uh, 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 uh. I tried it. It did not work. It, it didn't feel natural to me. And and I was also keep in mind I was leaving in Max's keyboard and Jackson's guitar and my bass that I played. I was just trying to find a different drum groove that could fit over that. These are experiments that I do often because when I lay down drums, traditionally I, I like to lay it down to something that's already been played, whether it's a sample or maybe a keyboard part or something. But this one started with the drums and because it started with the drums, everybody was playing to the drums. So when you have to go back and mute those drums and try to find a new groove, you can't force it. And I felt like I was forcing it by trying this I would die for you groove. So I had to just listen. And I just listened to the music. I listened to the bass line. I remember I soloed the bass line. And I just listened to it for a while. So that's that bass part I had laid down. And then I brought the percussion in. That tambourine was getting pretty funky to me. And so then I started messing around with like maybe a kind of like a James Brown meets like Miles Davis kind of groove because the drum groove that I ended up with it's almost like homage to like Cold Sweat by James Brown but because those claps were going clap 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 I kept thinking of that song from On the Corner by Miles Davis I can't think of the name of the tune the melody goes Really funky tune, and the drums that Jack DeJohnette's playing on that is is got this almost James Brown, but it's looser and jazzier, but it's it's funky, and so that's kind of what I was trying to do. There's some Clyde in there, especially that cat. That's some Clyde Stubblefield shit. But it's not the cold sweat groove. It's it's like kind of reinterpolated. And now remember, we had some guitar and we had some organ. So I brought those back in and we got this kind of vibe. And it worked. And listening to it soloed like this, you can hear there's some tension because they didn't play to those drums originally. And I'm trying to keep up with them. But tension is good. It's human. We are imperfect as humans, so we got to lean into it. And there I went back to the original groove I did, because that felt right for the melody. And then when Aloe came in, oh, actually, Aloe laid down his vocals to the original drums, now that I'm remembering. I had that original groove, and then when I sent him back a bounce with his vocals, that's when he gave me the critique. He said, oh, maybe, maybe the drums could be a little different. I want it to feel funkier. I want to be able to dance to it. And that's where it set off that journey. So that is actually really cool because I could also use his vocals to play off of. And if you recall in the video when I talked about uh, breaking down the song Don't Speak, I laid down those drums to Gwen's pocket. And so this one, I had Aloe's pocket. And I remember this was the last song of the day, and he was running out of time and had to run to an event that was here in San Francisco. And we did Seven Nation Army in one take. His vocal was done. It's the very first take he did. He did it in, you know, five minutes or so, and then had to get out the door. I'm gonna fight them all. Mm. A Seven Nation Army couldn't hold me back. Now listen to it with the drums. They're gonna rip it up. You hear what I'm saying? Right Some of those downbeats are all with him. And I'm talking to myself at night because I can't forget. Back and forth through my mind behind a cigarette. And the message coming from my eyes says leave it Jackson with that fuzz guitar. It sits in the pocket so nice. Oh, where is it? Again, we gotta do something 
That is a nice little nod to the originators of this song. All right. So this song has three verses in it. And remember, I talked about the riff being the main ingredient. That riff happens throughout the whole song. It breaks down to just drums and like low guitar like or, the you know, the bass. Actually, I think maybe they did they use a bass on this song or was it just I think it might have just been guitar and drums. But he adds layers of guitars to help with the energy. So we were following that same tradition. But when it got to the third verse, I was like, man, it, it would be cool if the third verse just kind of felt like a bridge. But in order to do that, I had to figure out something and I had to do it myself because Jackson and Max weren't here. So I actually, I plugged my Telecaster guitar into the console here. And I did that because I love Prince and I love Sly Stone and I love the way that a direct guitar can sound. I was thinking about Prince because I wanted to uh, give myself a bed of something to play the guitar to. So I pulled out this Prophet and I just kind of played this droney thing and messed with like it feeling the variable speed so it's kind of pitch bendy and i don't know why that reminds me of prince it reminds me of like dirty mind or maybe 1999 or controversy or something so same drums same percussion but now i need something funky so it started with this guitar part that i played and that's the sly part this thinking of um um thank you be myself again just just the kind of the way the string sound reminds me of sly and i do this thing a lot when i'm playing rhythm guitars where i'll do one part and then i want to do another part that is got a similar fashion like some single notes and a couple of chords maybe here and there but i'll pan it to the opposite speaker. So in this case, I laid down a new guitar part and panned it to the right speaker against this original guitar part that I played on the left speaker. So it sounds like this. And I tried hearing it against the bass line I had been playing. But again, remember, I wanted it to feel like a bridge. So I played some new bass to it, and it became this. All right, now once I had this part, oh here, let's put Aloe's voice in there. Woo! That feels good. All right, so now when I had this section, that was when I was like, shit, man, I need some horns on this. I need, I need Daniel Casares. He's the cat that can write some syncopated horn funk that feels like some Tower of Power, feels like that East Bay Grease. And, and it started with this section. I was like, I think you guys can play the riff that plays on the chorus, but I just really want you to focus on this section. And then Daniel came in with these charts written, him and Mike Omos. First section that we recorded with the horns was this section. Check it out. And I do that same thing where I like to cut the drums out and focus on little hits that the horns do. Yeah. And right here. Yeah. And he leaves all that space for the vocal. So it's like this call and response. No backgrounds on this. One take vocal, baby. And then we're into the riff with the horns. I always love how this song became synonymous with like college football games and, uh, and soccer too, or football around the rest of the world. You would hear this, it was like an anthem. So I was like, we can't lose that riff. We gotta make it feel like the way it should feel if you're at a football game. Yeah, then you get into that post-chorus. 
We just got to hear that bridge one more time. Shall we hear it? Lick it. Uh! <laughs> Let's listen to just the horns. That berry. Did you hear that? Come on. I'm going to Wichita. Uh. Yeah, so that's Seven Nation Army. A lot of hang up your hang ups on this song. Oh, yeah. Hang up your hang ups. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah, hang up your hang ups by Herbie Hancock. Well, of course, because that song was recorded in this very room right here. Not this control room, but that room over there. Yeah, show them that room. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where Manchild was made along with Secrets and uh, Thrust and Sextent and a little bit of Headhunters. I, they, it's reported, when you look it up, it's reported that Headhunters was recorded in Studio D. However, I got the information from some of the Headhunters, those guys, and they recorded that downstairs in Studio A. I'm telling you, this is a legendary place, Hyde Street Studios. Anyway, guys, if you like this content, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and leave me a comment. I've got lots more to say if you want to listen and watch. Peace and light. See you soon. Woo!